is hip hop black culture or is hip hop its own culture? Fuck do I need to apologize for? The amount of young rappers that are lined up to go sell their black trauma to Vlad is sickening. Adam 22 of the No Jumper podcast, who was also culture vulture, click baity tactics. One would argue that DJ academics and Vlad are one and the same in this situation. Lately, a lot of black media personalities have been drawing a line in the sand when it comes to how we treat and deal with those who monetize black trauma. The most common conversation is DJ Vlad being a culture vulture and how his ass profits off of selling and monetizing black trauma. One would argue that DJ Academics and Vlad are one and the same in this situation. DJ Academics had a whole platform, he called it the War on Chirac, where he detailed the beefs and murders of a lot of these young up and coming rappers out of Chicago. Shit was wild. Pissed a lot of people off, especially uh, people in Chicago. A lot of the rappers who lost their friends, family, like, all, you know, it was ugly, like to the point where I think he actually got, you know, a few rappers wanted to fight him over it. Uh, I believe he doesn't do it anymore, which is a testament to what I'm going to say as far as people who profit off of black trauma. That was the beginning of the drill era. So that was like Chief Keef and all of them above the drill music that we all listen to and hear every day and love the same way we love all other forms of rap music. Academics actually helped usher in that sound because if he didn't shed light on what these artists were doing, which is, you know, it sucks, but in the same time, they were able to still put out music because that's where, you know, this and the ops and all of that shit comes from. It's like, these are the artists that ushered in that. Fucking crazy. And ever since then, there have been a ton of YouTube creators who copycat a DJ Vlad or DJ Academics because they were kind of the first two to actually really find a lane in a sense. Like Vlad used to actually just interview you know, people, you'd have them come up there and they would talk shit like people in hip hop media. And then it got to a point where he was seeing that, you know, oh shit, I bring this person up here if they have a problem with this person because hip hop beef has always been sexy in a sense, right? To so whereas though, we wanna know why this person is beefing with that one. If you hear it in the song, you wanna hear certain lyrics. And even though, you know, the days of, you know, where Jets being on wax, is past us, it's like we still can't get away from it. So it all, it essentially evolved into something bigger than what it actually should have been or what it started to be, I guess I should say. Not what it should have been because nobody knows what something's gonna be when they start it, right? And one of the more popular ones that popped out of these guys who do these uh, hip hop like podcasts was Adam 22 of the No Jumper podcast, who was also accused of being a culture vulture in a sense. Now, the problem that I see, and I believe Star said this years ago, hip hop isn't a culture because it doesn't have any sort of guidelines. The bar seems to be whoever has the money, has the power, he makes all the rules in hip hop culture. Oh, because such and such sold X amount of records, he's better than this one, or because, you know what I'm saying? Like, it, it's never any real guidelines of what it should be. It's never any real guidelines of who is culture, what is culture, what isn't culture. Like, there's a lot going on here, but we tend to throw the term culture around in regards to hip hop. So it's like, is it is hip hop black culture or is hip hop its own culture? You know what I'm saying? Like, that's what it comes down to because when people say the culture, it's like, all right, are you talking about you and yours? Are you talking about about just rap. Recently, Joe Budden had Adam 22 on his podcast, the Joe Budden podcast, where Joe, in a sense, kind of confronted Adam 22 for his culture vulture click baity tactics in a form of monetizing black trauma. I have to tip my hat off to Adam because he does understand why people label him that way. Well, I still don't think he gets the point of what the black content creators are trying to do because image is everything. Whether people like to, to believe it or not. And the reason I say image is everything is because when you hear people say, oh, for instance, let's just the, the simple black men are angry. It's like because there might be one or two black men who appear to be angry when you ask them something doesn't mean that that's not all black men. But unfortunately, we live in a society where we group everybody in. We don't look at people as individuals because there aren't too many individual groups. You're either black, brown, gay, straight, yellow, white, rich, poor, Republican, Democrat, it's always grouped, there's no individual. So when one person or a handful of people from a certain group do something, we kind of group people into it. That's why I say image is everything. So the fact that these, these, these white content creators don't care about who they're hurting, as long as they're getting paid, it's kind of the same argument 
with Netflix and Dahmer. People want to pick and choose what they're mad about. Like if these guys are putting out videos where they're promoting rap beef and they're letting these artists come up here and say something and then somebody gets killed, whether it's from the camp, somebody's family or said artist, where's the outrage? Where's the triggering then? Nobody's telling them, hey, take that video down. That's hurting my family. Like honestly, when it comes to DJ Vlad, like I haven't been watching Vlad's videos for years. This is way before the Farrakhan statements where he misquoted. But years ago, I forget the names of the rappers and, and please forgive me, but in a sense, like I don't want to mention them because I don't want to trigger anybody. But there was a rapper who was killed by another rapper outside of a studio or whatever. Turns out that, you know, the rapper that killed the other guy got off in self-defense and Vlad ended up doing a video with this guy. And this guy's on his couch detailing what happened and why he shot the dude. And I'm sitting there like, hold up, nobody is, I didn't even, I'm not related or know anybody in the, the family, but I was disturbed in hearing this guy detail this thing. I really thought it was fucked up. You know, not only is it tacky, but it's disturbing that we as black people, especially in the hip hop culture, whatever that looks like, we are so open arms to everybody, whether it comes to religion or your color or even in some instances, orientation, however you identify. Like we're so open to accepting everybody, but people outside of us shit all over us. The amount of young rappers that are lined up to go sell their black trauma to Vlad is sickening. But like I said, hip hop culture has no real guidelines. So who am I to sit here and say what's right or wrong? So when Vlad said what he said and he misquoted Minister Louis Farrakhan and he refused to apologize, I had to remove that guy from my algorithm. And Vlad's reasoning for not issuing a public apology was because his bottom line was not being affected. Basically, he wasn't losing any money. He wasn't losing any subscribers or any real subscribers. So fuck do I need to apologize for? That let me know all I really need to know about this man, Vlad. Now, people over the years have been saying things about him. People over the years have been, you know, they felt the way about him, but I can never really judge somebody off of somebody else's opinion. Like, I can't. Like, your experience doesn't make facts, in a sense, for me. So, from that point forward, DJ Vlad is a culture vulture in its truest form, if you ask me. Because in his mind, it's okay for him to sleep with black women, but he don't really fuck with or respect black men. And I don't like that. Now, look, I'm not Muslim. Matter of fact, I'm not even religious. But Minister Louis Farrakhan is a historical black treasure. He's a staple in the black community and he should be treated as such. There should be no slander towards his man name, whether you agree with him or not. That powerful black man needs to be held in the same light that y'all would hold any powerful white man. Here's a secret. The real reason we don't have any unity is because we don't respect ourselves. So outsiders don't respect us. And deeper than that, I don't have no problem with clickbait. I'll be real with you. It's 2022. If you're still getting food by clickbait or if you're still getting catfished in 2022 you deserve what you get because the information is there we all know what clickbait is we all know people are going to say shit to get us in an uproar and we're human so it's okay to fall victim to it but you can't get mad and want to cancel somebody because of clickbait clickbait's not a cancelable offense culture vulturing that's a cancelable offense soldier boy was just on a rant towards dj vlad because vlad was out here doing some nasty work now vlad recently sat down with teddy riley who's the father of Nia Riley, who is Soldier Boy's ex-girlfriend. Now, Soldier Boy and Nia Riley, they had some issues, and you know, no no relationships perfect. But for Vlad to ask this father about his daughter's personal life on camera is nasty work. Because I'm telling me as a father, don't ask me about my daughter and her issues on camera. It's not a good look. And Vlad, you shouldn't be doing that. It's just gross. This is black trauma. You don't know how that man feels. You don't know what that man daughter went through. And for you to sit there and bring it up like it's nasty. It's nasty. And all of y'all who are like, oh, well, nobody's saying what Soldier Boy did was right. Nobody's trying to justify that. What we're saying is, Vlad, you're gross for even asking that man that on video. And Soldier Boy had every right to curse you the fuck out because you are a punk. Like, you don't get to sit here and do this bullshit because if somebody, like he said, somebody pull up on you, you ready to sue. So, yeah, until the lot of you black rappers stop going up there to Vlad TV and selling your black trauma, don't ask me to join in none of your boycott for television shows, none of your boycott 
boycotts for these high-end fashion brands that don't respect y'all, but y'all quick to give them y'all money. Don't ask me to do none of that shit if y'all are gonna continue to sell black trauma and let these culture vultures treat us as if we're just some fucking prop. Now, DJ Academics had a hell of a week when he made some comments referring to the founders of hip hop as broken dusty. It was fucked up at. Academics, you know, he made his name in the YouTube game, like, you know, covering hip hop drama. He's also known for streaming on Twitch. And when he goes on his streams, he drinking some Henny, he start to rant, he's liable to say anything. Now, me personally, I don't agree with drinking Hennessy, let alone drinking Hennessy and streaming. That's the devil's juice. It ain't good. Sidebar, we definitely gotta blame Tupac for this. Tupac is responsible for all young black men wanting to drink Hennessy because he said it damn near every fucking bar. Tupac and Hennessy is like, they damn near go together. And I'm telling you, that's every, as soon as you come off the porch, you got a couple dollars in your hand, you get some Henny. Trust me, I did it for years. It's gross, it's horrible. And if you ask me, if Tupac was drinking tequila that a Henny, he might have lived past 25. Hot take. Anyway, academics had all the OG rappers coming out making a statement. They were literally asking to cut out his tongue. They said what he said was disrespectful. It was atrocious. What's another one of those big disgusting words? They just, they didn't like it. Rightfully so. You shouldn't call the founding fathers of hip hop broken dusty because you're too busy knocking the door down. Everybody else that's coming after me, y'all pick up whatever I miss. That's how it's supposed to go. But life don't work like that. You live, you learn, you grow, and you try to move on and you try to help those behind you, but we seem to have this disconnection to where as though if I do something better than you, you can't tell me shit. And that's kind of a fucked up attitude to have, but whatever. The contrast here, academics call the hip hop OGs broke dusty and they all wanted his head. They put that nigga tongue on a plate, something. DJ Vlad, his ass disrespected basically black elite, which would in a sense, you know, be like your grandfather, maybe some of y'all great grandfather. Like he literally disrespected our culture and didn't apologize and nobody said anything. In fact, that's not true. I think it was only what Lord Jamar Godfrey and Royce the five nine were like the vocal ones who were like, nah, we're not fucking with Vlad. It was like until he apologizes for what he said or misquoting the minister, we're not fucking with him. And they, you know, asked a bunch of other rappers to do the same. But, you know, once again, no guidelines. Nobody's going to like people are out here for self. It's fucking sucks. Crazy part was at this point in time, I think Lord Jamar and Godfrey were, they were essentially like regulars on Vlad. They would go up there and just discuss like everyday topics or, you know, cultural shit. And only thing they were like, yo, we just want an apology. And Vlad, he wasn't willing to apologize. And these guys basically said, you know what? No hard feelings, but I can't fuck with. Because once again, you gotta stand for something. And you know, personally, I thought what those, what those men did was honorable because like I said, we, and black culture especially we're so forgiving and we're so like sensitive to everybody else's cultures and religions that when people just look at us and be like yeah whatever we don't give a fuck about y'all you know like y'all don't matter like the shit is so wild that other people from other countries when they you know come here and i'm not saying everybody but i'm just saying that the general census is if you come here and you want to align yourself with white people just shit on black people because then in a sense you're looked at as well you you don't like them either, so you're cool with us. Now, I'm not, you know, absorbing what academics did because, you know, in a sense, anybody who's like following hip hop culture, they are monetizing it. And a lot of times, a lot of the black trauma sells, like drama sells, like people want to see negative shit, which is why I'm like, I don't understand how everybody was up in arms and wanted to have Netflix pull down Dahmer. It's like, y'all love drama, y'all love the shit, but apparently it's only selective when it comes to certain people. In my book, the only difference between academics and Vlad and Adam 22 is Ak is actually from our culture, whether y'all like it or not. When you're black and you're in hip hop, there's nowhere else you can go. White people in hip hop, they can skate around and they can, you know, hide in certain pockets. Now I'm referring to like, you know, the younger ones, not in a sense Eminem because Eminem, we know his story. Like he's actually from that cloth. Like he grew up and he respects all of this shit. Cause when you know that you're a guest in somebody's house, you need to respect it. That's just how I feel. Now, academics also caught heat because he made some comments about Lil Wayne's daughter where he used her in an example. And in this example, he made a general statement about women, but he referred to said women as bitches. And everybody was like, yo, you call Lil Wayne's daughter a bitch. You're fucking disgusting. <laughs> 
but the whole thing, the whole statement was problematic. But everybody only focused on Lil Wayne's daughter. Once again, hip hop coming together for something, but at the wrong time and towards the wrong person. I'm gonna go out on a limb and say that academics is willing to accept accountability and apologize when called out. Unlike Vlad, Vlad, he doesn't think he does anything wrong. He doesn't think that he needs to apologize. Like Act is one of us and Act has actually contributed more to the culture than Vlad has contributed. Vlad has actually taken more than he's actually given, if we're being honest. Vlad and Adam 22 really have no moral compass when it comes to monetizing black trauma. What I mean by that is they will post shit if it's going to get them the clicks and they don't care who they trigger or who they hurt in the process, as long as the numbers come running in. That's what I mean about being a culture vulture. We can hold act accountable because our people have no problem intimidating and applying pressure to our own kind. So yeah, in a sense, act isn't a culture vulture if you can hold him accountable and press him. Nobody can do that to Vlad. Vlad sued fucking Rick Ross. Do your Googles. Once again, we're so forgiving and accepting of everybody else. We're so sensitive to everybody else's needs and we're so forgiving to even our oppressor, but we have no problem applying pressure and intimidating our own kind. It's fucking disgusting. That's why everybody treats us the way that they do. Cause look at how we treat our own. Rinse with ant damn it. Rinse with ant damn it.